Hi, good morning. And if you are in Canada, good evening. Well, today um, we are really lucky to have on the Serene View Rose Catacal. And I'm really pleased to be able to introduce her to you. So for those of you who are new to the Serene View, the Serene View is my weekly live show that I do to talk to leaders about different aspects of conscious business. So Rose, who is I mean, a good friend of mine, is is a executive leader at the Public Service of Canada. Uh, she has been putting together workplace health initiatives for her organization. And today, I mean, we are very honored to have her here with us um, to look at how we too can you know, apply some of these initiatives into our organization. So welcome, Rose. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, thank you, Serene. Very happy to be here. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm really honored and it's truly really a pleasure of mine to share what I did and uh, some lessons learned and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Right. Okay. So do you want to just share a little bit about what you have done for the uh, workplace mental health in Canada? So um, I am, just to be clear, I'm not a uh, mental health practitioner. I am a, a public servant, a leader. And um, you're, you'll see in this uh, presentation, um, we, uh, we as a federal public service took uh, mental health to be a very important issue. Uh, and this was done, um, started perhaps uh, five to eight years ago. I put this in place about uh, two, three years ago, uh, taking um, what we had in, in our Canadian society and applied it to uh, our particular workplace. Um, this might be applicable to others, uh, that, and that's what I'm hoping you can see some linkages. Um, I will be uh, talking about what worked and what didn't work, um, and uh, how we went about it in a, in a systematic uh, fashion. So uh, ha looking forward to showing you that today. So would you like me to show you the, show the video of the standards first? Yeah, that would be great. This will yeah. give you an All overview right. uh, of... Um, what's happening in uh, Canada. Okay. Every day, millions of Canadians go to work, but every week, about a half a million Canadians cannot because of a mental health problem or illness. And since most of us spend around 60% of our waking hours at work, ensuring our workplaces are psychologically safe, it's important business. But when it comes to health and safety in the workplace, we sometimes only think about physical health. Mental health, well, it's just not top of mind. But here's why it should be. The cost of mental health problems and illnesses to the Canadian economy is at least $51 billion per year. Employers can see the impact through things like absenteeism, lost productivity, and high turnover. It's a hefty price to pay. The workplace should provide an opportunity to feel productive and thrive. When we're not well, it affects everything we do, at home and at work. While people don't come for maintenance manual, there is a process organizations can and should follow to prevent harm and promote overall mental wellness. It's called the National Standard for Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace, and it's the first of its kind in the world. Developed in Canada and used by countless organizations and companies, it's the roadmap for employers to create a mentally healthier workplace. The standard is all about shifting workplace culture to value mental health and safety as much as we do physical health and safety. It provides a framework to assess your current workplace, set objectives, and take action to enhance the programs, policies, benefits, and training you already have in place at work. The standard is voluntary, and there's no single prescribed way to implement it. It's designed to allow for flexibility and customization to effectively implement in your unique organization. But sometimes that leaves employers wondering how to get started. The Mental Health Commission and its partners have created resources to help. Start by downloading the standard and looking at what policies and procedures you already have in place. The Assembling the Pieces Guiding Toolkit will take you step by step through implementing the standard. You could also take advantage of training resources, like being a mindful employee. A free online program that introduces employees to the factors that impact mental health and what we can all do to support our co-workers and ourselves. People are your most valuable assets. Commit to creating a psychologically safe work environment and help your employees thrive inside and outside the workplace. You can do this. Start today. Visit mentalhealthcommission.ca. So that's a little bit about mental health um, at, can at Canada. So do you want to share a little bit more about it with us? Yeah, so that was a very quick overview. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, talk to you uh, a little bit more in depth um, about what uh, we did. So I'm going to share a, a few slides uh, so that you can uh, see what I've done. 
Let me just get that on the screen here. Hopefully you can see that. Yes. Good. I think if you put out the, if you go onto a slideshow, you'll be able to see better. Okay. Let me just bear with me in a second. Where's the slideshow icon? It's okay. I mean, Rose, if you can, that's fine. I can't seem to find it. It's not showing up on my menu. So yeah, that's all right. Um, Don't worry about sorry it. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So let me put it back up. You, you, you don't see it anymore? Okay. How come it's not showing? It's always okay. like that, right? It works in all the dry runs. And the moment that you need to go live, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> How many times I've been on live, it always happens like that. Okay. It's fine. Let's just, just show it the way it was. It's okay. Do you see it now? No. Um, You need to share it. It's not shared. Okay, it's not sharing. There. Okay. So I'll go back to. Let's go back to. There. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to talk about um, is what actually mental health is. And, um, you know, we probably have all our own definitions about uh, what that is. Um, what I learned first with my team is that there's actually a continuum um, that, you know, you can be, um, you know, mentally healthy, and I'll go into a little bit about detail, or and all the way to mentally ill. And maybe most of us, we have preconceived notions that mental, mental health is equal to mental illness, and it's not. So uh, let me take myself for an example. Um, you know, most days I'm at the left now. I'm, I'm pretty well, um, you know, um, my moods are, are pretty stable. I'm sleeping well. I, I have good energy, um, you know, and I'm socially active and I'm performing well. But, you know, like everybody from time to time, um, you know, I can be nervous. I can be sad. I can be irritable. So I'm going into the reacting uh, mode. Uh, I have trouble sleeping. Um, I'm, I'm tired, I don't have enough energy, and, uh, you know, I don't want to do something today, I want to, uh, you know, send it to tomorrow, and I don't feel like socializing. And then, as you see, if you go down further in the continuum, you're, you're not being mentally well. So, um, first takeaway is that mental health is really a continuum, and you could actually be anywhere on that continuum and in, in any of those areas at one time. So really important to understand that. And the reason we wanted to under, uh, show this model was that there's a real stigma around mental health. You know, if you went into work or talk to your friends, I'm not me mentally well, um, th there's a stigma associated with that. So this is why we want to educate people that it's not one thing, but it's rather a continuum. Uh, Serena, I can't hear you. You're on. Um... Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So when you talk about this continuum, would you say that most workers are on which end of the continuum? Well, it, it's very subjective, you know. So my, um, you know, you, you and I, we might have different stress uh, limitations. We might be more, um, you know, have a tolerance, higher tolerance. So, you know, again, you need to do a self-assessment. Uh, the statistics that we saw in the video, um, you know, many pe people are probably between reacting and injured uh, and maybe, you know, moving to the, the ill. It very much depends the context in which you're operating and how, how aware are, are you of what you're going through. All right. And so do you think that, I mean, oh, there's something that organizations can do? Yeah, so uh, that's what uh, I'm going to cover next. Um, we heard about the uh, um, the national standard, so that would be the second question that I'd, I'd like to answer. Um, so let me show you that slide. 
I wish I could show it bigger, but I don't see it here. That's the problem. Okay, uh, uh, okay. so the, the national standard is um, what they quickly went through. There's actually 13 psychological uh, health, uh, psychologically health and safety workplace factors. As I know, that's a mouthful. There's 13 of them. And what the Mental Health Commission did is they studied all of this with a group of, uh, of uh psychiatrists, uh, therapists, and, and other uh, different kinds of professionals. And um, if you look at, I'm not going to go through every one of them, but if you look at some of these, hopefully you'll be able to uh, recognize that uh, on one side, if this is not working, it's a stress. And on the other side, if it is working, it actually helps with your mental health. So let me give you an example. If you go to the right-hand side, uh, it talks about clear leadership and expectations. Um, so if you have a, a leader who's pretty clear on the, your mandate, your priorities, what you, you are expected to do, uh, just imagine you're pretty clear on what your roles and responsibilities are. On the flip side, if it's pretty vague um, in the gray area or worse, you know, you actually don't know what you're supposed to be doing, can you imagine how much stress that's causing you? Let me take another example. Um, Civility and respect, which is at the top right-hand cor uh, corner. Um, if you're uh, in a workplace where there's a lot of conflict, uh, team members not getting along, you're not getting along with your other colleagues in other departments, or you have a problem with a client or a stakeholder, um, this is going to cause you a lot of stress. Um, so if you have a mechanism where you know there's um, some sort of code about civility, and being respectful and showing respectful behaviors, that could help you alleviate that stress. Um, the video talked about um, you know, physical uh, health. So mental health should not be looked at in isolation. Uh, we all know if you exercise, um, you, know, you take a walk, you go for a jog, you swim, um, it, this helps you with your, your mental health. Um, so when you're at work, uh, we, uh, you know, I, I used to encourage people to take a walk at lunch or take a coffee break uh, when we're actually in the workplace. But I would suggest even from working at home, from home, uh, one of the things I've done, I, I used to just exercise uh, at the end of the day. I've split up my exercise across the day. So I do some 20 minutes in the morning, uh, 20 minutes at lunchtime, I actually go for a walk. And then um, at the end of the day, I do some yoga. So what I've done is I've split uh, my, my physical activity throughout the course of the day, and that's really helped with my own mental health. And then lastly, um, workload is probably the number one issue for most workplaces and most employees. So if you have too much work, not enough time, not enough energy, guess what? That's also going to cause you stress. So that's at the bottom of the slide. Um, but if you have, you have a discussion with your manager, you, you prioritize the work that you're going to do um, and, you know, move the other priorities uh, to uh, later on in the year, or you, if you have, you can share the workload. Most places you can't because there's a limited resources. These are ways to alleviate the stress. So I've given you some examples on how uh, these uh, uh, factors could be applied in the workplace. Um, and we, we, this is what we um, used uh, in, in our program. I, I think it's applicable to any country in any workplace. Uh, my advice is to not tackle all because it, you won't be able to do that. But select, look at your surveys, talk to your staff and, and maybe pick, you know, three to five that you want to work on during the course of the coming months uh, to help you. Um, alleviate some of the causes of stress in the workplace. I think that's really sound advice. Um, and if you think about it, right, I mean, which part of it do you think is applicable in other countries, other organizations? Which part do you think is like, oh, I think this is like unique to Canada? Um, I think, you know, we all have leaders in an organization, mostly uh, even if it's informal leadership. So the more uh, I would certainly select that um, if you're in a leadership role, um, you can um, be uh, there to set clear expectations, 
um, try to clarify roles and responsibilities. I think uh, workload management is something all organizations struggle with. We all have work to do and not enough hours to do them. I think that's every country and every organization would have to tackle that. And, uh, well, we all um, are, are physical beings, so uh, some sort of uh, uh, physical, uh, you know, importance of physical activity, which helps with mental activity, um, is certainly applicable in all countries. On the others, um, you know, you might have it in, you know, balance, for example, balancing your workload uh, with your family responsibilities or others. Um, I'm sure most uh, working employees ac across the, the world are, are struggling with that, especially during this time. So those are some that I think will apply to other countries. Okay. Um, and what exactly did you do at your organization? I mean, can you share a little bit about, you know, what are some of the, you know, kind of more practical things that has happened in your organization and what worked, what didn't work and so okay. forth? So um, this is, uh, I'm showing you a slide and I'll, again, I'm not going to read uh, the whole thing. Um, but what we did is we had a four pronged approach. Um, we looked at, um, you know, create, creating awareness, educating. Um, and so, um, you know, for example, what is mental health? Um, what, are, what are some of the factors that cause it? So we held a number of training sessions, and I've given you some examples there. Uh, the video mentioned uh, a few as well. Um, and we had workshops and we had uh, training sessions. So awareness, you know, reducing the stigma. Uh, the second area uh, to the right, building capacity and engaging employees. So as we were training, uh, we also uh, selected a champion uh, who could talk about this uh, in, in, you know, with staff. We had committees that were set up. We actually created an ambassadors network across uh, um, the department and certified a number of people who could talk about mental health. Uh, and this was really uh, successful because we engaged employees and it wasn't simply, you know, uh, me and my team saying something, but it was very much employees uh, being our spokespeople for this. Uh, thirdly, we provided um, support and aid. Um, and now this was pre-pandemic and we were talking about alternative work arrangements at that time. So working from home or working, uh, you know, a hybrid work model and having support from your peers. And then the last area was, um, you know, as you uh, became more aware, you were engaging staff and creating those supports uh, to look out for those uh, risk areas. Um, and this is where you would tailor it to your particular business unit. So some, um, you know, uh, work units might have higher risk, let's say uh, they're a call center where there's a lot of stress in dealing with the customer and, uh, you know, it's uh, very tight time frames. Whereas another workplace, maybe it's more, you know, uh, analytical work and it's not as stressful. So really adapting uh, what we had put together for your particular uh, work unit based on risk. Yes, I think that's fair. I mean, looking at how we can adapt uh, to different organizations and to different people. I mean, th for those of you who are listening in right now, um, we can see your comments. So if you have a particular question about, hey, you know, how do I put, do this in my organization? Or, you know, I've done it and it doesn't work. Uh, then just post it in the comment and Rose can get to it and make a little bit of her experience um, as to how she's done it, what would she have done if she was you. So just post it in the comments if you want us to um, look at some of your particular situations. Uh, now from the big picture, maybe we look at the uh, slightly smaller picture. Um, some of us may not be in charge of the whole organization. Uh, it may just be us, right? I mean, just us and our team. So if I'm just one leader, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a peon in the, in the hierarchy of things. What can I do? You know, what can I do for my people? Uh, very good question, uh, and I'm a real believer, um, anything like this, you, you need to model as a leader uh, what you're preaching. And so um, one of the things we did, and we integrated this into our leadership program, was to talk about what can you as a leader um, 
uh, do for yourself. You can't take care of others unless you're looking after yourself. So um, I, there's a couple of tips on the left-hand side there. Um, you know, and I talked about this myself, scheduling some me time and whatever that me time is. You know, are you exercising? Are you meditating? Are you, uh, you know, going for a walk? Are you just sitting quietly with a cup of tea on the veranda? Whatever that might look like. Um, uh, another example would be, um, uh, you know, asking for help. We, you know, sometimes as leaders, we don't always ask for help. We think we need to know everything. So, you know, uh, try to do that. And one more, you know, look at what you're eating. You know, this will affect your physical as well as your mental um, so really think about taking care of yourself. And then uh, to the right, you can support your teams because you can show that you're role modeling that, you know, uh, from time to time, my mental health is not up to par. So what can I do to support you? And just as you're doing, you need to be connecting with your team. You need to talk about it, you know, create a climate where you can uh, make this comfortable, uh, create some sort of formal structure roles, responsibilities, so that, you know, it's less gray zone and, and ca therefore causes less stress. Uh, be flexible, uh, share, talk about, uh, uh, talk about it more, share, share your, your, your challenges, and look at workload. Um, you know, you, as a leader, you should be knowing what your employees are working for. Is it too much given their particular circumstances? Do they need some help? Do they need some coaching? And all of these things, it, it looks like it's just talking about the work, but it actually helps you with your mental health and being mentally well. Well, I think one of the issues that leaders face right now is, is our workload is already very heavy, right? So this becomes then yet another thing uh, on top of everything else that I have to do. I mean... Uh, do you have any you know, advice? Because as leaders, I think a lot of us are already coping with rapid changes uh, after COVID. We are coping with falling business uh, figures. And yet now we have to look at yet this another issue. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a very natural response. But you should look at this as part of taking care of your team. And you're probably already doing that if you're you know, a leader. And so there's a, just a couple of examples here where you can strengthen that. Um, and just, let's say my workload is too much. Well, I should role model. Well, I need to talk to my boss and say, look, at, I can't do all of this. I need to, uh, you know, prioritize. And can we agree upon, you know, perhaps a different timetable? Um, this should not be seen separate from how you're, you're, you're working with your team. It should be integrated as much as possible. And so that's what the fact, that's why I like the standard, because it actually looked at your workplace and what you're already doing. Well, for those of you who are leaders who are listening in on this, if you have objections, or if you have questions about how you want to do it, um, then you can actually perhaps post it in the comments and we can get to it. Um, we can just let us know what are some of the difficulties you're facing. Uh, because I think as leaders, we face so many different challenges. Uh, even if I look at the list on the left, for example, scheduling me time, you know, uh, looking for a good diet, uh, all of this, a lot of it is um, stuff that I kind of, we know we should do. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when there's so much piled up, um, oftentimes that's, I think, the first thing that gets sacrificed. And as we talked about it earlier on, if we are already on the injured or ill side, I think it will be very hard for us to help others with it. So if you have a question, if there is something that you want to talk about, um, your particular circumstances, just post it in the comments um, and uh, Rose can actually probably share her, share her experience. Okay. So what do you see in the future, Rose? I mean, what do you hope can happen you know, with workplaces? I, I think uh, uh, my hope is um, that you know, we, we, you know, you build the knowledge, you build the awareness. And I think because of the pandemic, many bad things have happened. But one of the good things, we're talking about mental health a lot more. And so, you know, I, um, you, you set the base, but then you can actually tailor this to your workplace. So you can look at, um, in the particular organization I worked in, it was the IT, uh, an organization. 
So what does this mean in a technological uh, service provider organization? Um, most of our employees were men. What does this mean for men? Um, so these are the kinds of things that you can even make it more relevant and it resonates more with your employees. Because as you can see, it, it, you know, if you look at a big picture, it seems like a lot. What am I going to do? Where do I start? But if you can bring it down to your business unit or your group level and make it really relevant to the challenges your particular team is going through um, and, and, and create that psychologically safe environment, then uh, I think there's a lot of success. And where we this just becomes part of, you know, we have some good days, we have not so good days. We have some challenging days and other days that are successful. It's part of the discussion and action that you take in the workplace. Um, and now we're going through the pandemic. Um, I think that um, we need to be very mindful of this going forward. There's lots of articles and lots of people are talking about this. Um, so the more you can do in this regard, it will help you and your organization, um, you know, survive during the uh, pandemic as well as post pandemic. Um, you know, um, I, I also have think about some of our young people, uh, those that are either in university or schools. Uh, this is also, again, uh, there's lots of talk about that. My hope is that earlier start talking about this, uh, you know, when you're young then it's not seen as a stigma, you know, as you grow older, that this is, you know, part of the day-to-day -day conversation. And, um, and then particular groups, more vulnerable groups in our society, perhaps they're impacted more. Um, it won't be so uh, foreign to talk about this because we, uh, we accept as a society that this is, you know, part and parcel of um, how we live. And it shouldn't be seen as, uh, again, something bad and uh, sh be ashamed of it's it'll just be like your physical health you know we all talk about that quite freely um you know I, I have this great analogy if your leg is broken you don't blame the uh, person for the broken leg you actually treat it um, you do something about it similarly with with uh, mental wellness mental health men mental illness this is the kind of conversations and action we should have in the future and and i i hope uh, collectively, we'll be able to do that. Do you ever see a workplace as becoming like, you know, the place we go to for mental wellness rather than the place we go to to get stressed out, right? Because I think one of the things is this, right? Uh, we are stressed out as people. We are stressed out at our workplace. I think for 40% of us, it's our, one of our top three stresses. So do you, do you actually see that there will one day be a transformation? Well, it's interesting. Ironically, um, you know, the pandemic, most of us were working from home. And at the beginning, it was fine. But if you have children or you have, uh, you know, a family members to take care of, it became actually stressful because not only did you have to do your work and be on video conference all the time, you had to take care, uh, you know, of your family response and, and other things. But you, if you actually went to the workplace, people are now talking about, I want to return to the workplace. They, they're obviously working, but that social connection, being able to talk, Nat more naturally, you know, you know, those water cooler connections. It's ironic. Some of us are saying, let's go back to work because it'll improve our uh, uh, workplace, right? It'll improve our, our, our mental health. So I think, um, you know, we, we, I hope we've come, come through the pandemic realizing um, go, being in a workplace, a physical workplace, maybe it'll be a hybrid model going forward. There are some real benefits because of those uh, social connections that we really miss, that we long for. Uh, it's not the same as being on video conference, you know, having that cup of coffee, seeing the person um, and not having to look at yourself all the time. Um, that, that's, uh, that's, I find that ironic that that's maybe the way, way the conversation might go. Okay. Yes. Well, for those of you who are listening in, um, if you have questions um, about your particular circumstances or if you want to just kind of, you know, check in on what you can do, uh, you can just post the questions into the, into the comments. And 
um, I think Rose is also going to you're going to retire soon, right? And then she will have much better health. <laughs> And for those of you who want to connect with her and perhaps talk to her, uh, you know, more uh, privately about how, you know, that you can do it, uh, whether there's anything that you can do, then um, I would, I think that, you know, that's something you can talk about. Um, well, so Jory is talking, telling us that, you know, there are some countries where there isn't a strong hierarchy, people get a lot of help and respect. But then there are countries where they're not. And I think I agree with him. I mean, do you have any advice if I live in a country where, you know, people, I mean, there isn't just that kind of respect or civility. Even. Um, so I'm guessing at this. Um, you know, maybe it, it'll take some time um, or maybe it's not happening right now. So perhaps uh, if it's not in your 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 workplace or your society, maybe in your your particular your your context in which you're operating. So uh, you know, in your particular team, could you start there having this discussion? Maybe pick one of the one of the factors to work on, um, and not the whole thing. Um, you know, it, yes, you're you're right. There's a cultural dimension to this. It remember Canada. This only happened uh, five to eight years ago. So. Uh, it, it took some time to recognize that this was a, an issue. Um, and um, some would suggest in Canada there is a lot of hierarchy, so I, I, that's an interesting comment that's made. But start, start where you can have some influence. And, and so don't, you don't have to necessarily, you know, depend on the bigger picture, but start, st start small. That's uh, the best I can say. But I, I'll, I'll think about that a little bit more. Um, um, you know, we, we had a lot of players in our society working on this, um, but um, I think um, you'll have no choice because if you don't have a, uh, a healthy workforce, uh, mentally, physically, you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, function in, in a society in a proper way. She's also talking about what does greater resilience have to do with mental health? So um, if you look at those uh, factors for the leader, um, I didn't show all the work that I've done, but um, resilience, the more resilient you are, um, you as a person, but also creating that in your workplace, the more uh, you can be uh, working towards uh, mentally uh, well uh, workplace, a well well workplace. So if you're having a tough time, um, do you ask for help? That's being resilient. Um, it's not it's not uh, being weak. Um, if you are, um, you know, you for, for me, for example, I know that I work really well in the morning. Uh, but if you ask me towards the, you know, end of the day, I, I'm probably not going to be as uh, energized as I should be. And so I know that about myself. And so I used to say to my staff, let's have the discussions in the morning if that works for everybody. And or if we did have it in the late in the afternoon, uh, let me have a break. Like I was not afraid to say I, I need some time so that I can be strong. I can be resilient um, in order to address the challenges that we're working on. Yes, there is the, uh, um, the mental health continuum. Um, you know, obviously, if you're healthy, you're, you're more resilient. But there's nothing to say that if, you know, you're, you're towards the end, uh, the right-hand side. And, and if you are mentally hell, you need professional help. That should not be done by someone that's not uh, trained to do that. It, it's to help you move to perhaps a, between a reacting or a healthy state. Uh, and therefore, you become, you know, more more resilient and more strong. Because I think um, for, I was just going to say that for every leader as well, I mean, how much we bring to the table in terms of our mental health, our mental strength, what else is happening at home that's affecting us, um, you know, and where we show up on that continuum, yeah. that I think makes a lot of difference as well. And one so, point on this, um, you know, certainly a leader has responsibilities for themselves and their team, but it's also creating that work climate that so the resilience is not an individual responsibility it's also a responsibility of the organization to uh, minimize the stresses to the extent that they can 
so that you don't have to always be strong and resilient. Um, and so that's why this, this whole strategy was uh, focused on building capacity at every level in the organization. So I hope that answered the question. Happy yes. to uh, continue the discussion, uh, Jory. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, uh, but th very good questions. This is not easy. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, this is not easy. It, it takes time to do. It's not going to happen overnight. And, um, you know, again, post-pandemic or during the pandemic, things, things will, um, you know, take, take time. And so be patient with yourself uh, and then, you know, seek the help that you need to get there. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, I mean, if any of you have other questions, uh, please feel free to post um, in the comments page, um, in the comments at the bottom. So if not, I've actually posted um, Rose's uh, LinkedIn contact. And for those of you who want to catch up with her, speak to her on a more private basis, or talk a little bit about your organization or in your team, uh, then feel free to catch up with Rose. So thank you so much for coming by today, Rose. I think I've really learned a lot. Um, I've you know, really kind of opens up my mind about what can be done. Uh, because I think here in Singapore, we haven't developed um, our mental health standards to that extent yet. Um, so it opens up my mind to, you know, what else can be done and what probably is the next step uh, for many of the other countries. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing all of your information. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, and this is not something I did alone. I did it with my team. I did it with uh, many stakeholders, Mental Health Commission, um, you know, um, and this is this requires, you know, a lot of people to be involved. Um, but it, it's, it is a, a subject that's near and dear to my heart, and I think it's really, really important to do. So thank you for having me, and really a pleasure. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And for those of you who are still watching, um, we have this, uh, we, I'm doing a whole series on workplace mental health. Uh, next week, I'm inviting on a senior leader who is also a coach, um, who is talking about her own journey through mental health and what she has learned to build her own mental health capacity. So I hope to see you guys next week. And thank you so much once again, Rose. And thank you all of you for coming by um, for today's session. Bye-bye.